Today we are going to cover all of the elements that you need to have in your home staging contract to make sure that you have legally covered your tail. If you're not yet following us, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, click the notifications so you can be informed about our upcoming videos. We are Revisions Mentor and our goal is to help you get your home staging services off the ground and to be successful home stagers. So if you see something you like, if you have any questions about the materials that we're covering, drop us a comment below and we will respond to you. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about contracts, y'all. This is dry, but this is important stuff. Super dry. Super dry. Not at all sexy. Mm-mm, not <laughs> sexy. So I have the sure that we are covered in all regards in terms of the, the negotiations, the contracts that we enter into. So he helped us design this contract and we wanna share the very critical elements with you so that your contract is zipped up tight and you're covered in most all circumstances. And this is a really simple document. It's not long, it's less than two pages, it's very direct, it's to the point. Yours can be too, you can use our exact format to make your contract. Absolutely, so the first thing that you want to cover in the introduction of your contract is the location of the property that you're going to be staging and the name of the person who's gonna be responsible for paying for the staging services. Important. You wanna get paid. You wanna get paid. <laughs> <laughs> Point number two on our contract, we're talking about services to be rendered. The installation date is probably not going to match the date of your contract. So you wanna make sure that you're specifying what day you're actually going to be delivering and installing the staging job. Yes. And when you're signing your contract, make sure that both parties who are signing it include the date. That's an important part of, of a contract. The next bit, we're looking at what specifically we're providing in the service. So you want to get real specific about the rooms that you're staging, mm -hmm. living room, dining room, kitchenette, um, and any other little accessory areas. Are you doing the entryway? Are mm -hmm. you doing the foyer? Are you doing a powder room? Mm -hmm. um, and then you also wanna specify what you're providing, um, the full scope. Um, you don't have to get down to the minutia of it, but you wanna be clear that you're providing rugs, artwork, lamps, accessories, furnishings. Mm -hmm. I think that kind of covers it. You wanna make sure that the expectations are very clear so that they don't come back to you and say, well, you said you were gonna do this, but you did this. Right. You wanna make sure that everybody's on the same page. Right. <clears throat> and then um, next we're looking, we're reading this to you because it's a mm -hmm. contract that we do not have memorized for the obvious reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, payment. We're getting right into payment and we very specifically lay out the terms of our payment, which is what we're charging for, um, installation, design, mm -hmm and delivery on the initial day. As well as removal at closing. That's all tied into the, the first month. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we also clearly state in this area what our monthly renewal is. Mm -hmm. And the terms of our renewal, our clients renew on a monthly basis. It's a month to month contract. Yes. Um, so the rates are different and clearly stated in this section of the contract. Yes, and so we also require that the total amount of the invoice is due prior to staging installation and that the each subsequent month is going to be billed in monthly increments. Yep. Then we're getting into the termination and, um, you know, of course, either party can terminate with written notice. That's kind of standard in a contract. Um, we also have a caveat for um, a minimum deposit and 50% um, returnable if we've already placed orders for furnishings, which is usually happening right from the start. So, Click on the link below and send us an email and we'll send you some free downloads to help you keep your staging business organized. Okay, right. getting back to the contract. Um, next up, we're looking at the maintenance of furniture and accessories. Yeah, we do require that all of the construction or any of the repairs to the home are completed prior to us bringing in our upholstered furniture. We don't want um, painters sanding drywall and the, those dust particles getting into our materials. So we do require that all of the painting and all of the major work is done before we bring in our stuff. Our intention is that um, our furnishings are not going to be used or lived on by homeowners. And we make that very clear in our contract. Um, we're protecting our stuff. We, yeah. don't, we don't want it damaged and they don't want to be mm -hmm. liable for it in a, in a way that is revolving around them actually living on it. It's, our stuff is not designed for that, nor is yours. Right. 
Um, in addition to that, we have an inventory rider that requires that they give us 14 days notification so that we have enough time to line up our, our movers. So when the house goes under contract, we try to stay in touch with the realtors anyhow, so we've mm -hmm. never really been surprised by this. Um, but we stay in touch with the realtors so we know like, hey, the house has gone under contract. Okay, when is the end of due diligence? We like to keep our inventory in place until the due diligence date has passed just because you know lots and lots of contracts do fall through. So you don't yeah. wanna pull your staging inventory and then have the contract fall through after due diligence, then the buyer's on the hook for their due diligence money. So they're gonna be less likely to walk. Right. And then I think the very yeah. end of our contract, we're really just listing out a bunch of um, really practical conditions that we need in order for this whole process to run really smoothly. Yep. And um, maybe just to kind of list those off for you very quickly, um, we're including, uh, an agreement for the homeowner to provide us a key mm -hmm. so that we can access the property throughout the, the term of the contract. Yep, we're saying that the inventory that we install cannot be removed by any other parties and they would be responsible if anything were removed. Yep. Um, we're saying no smoking in the home, no uh, pest control or pest treatments um, can be applied to the home while our inventory is in the space. Mm -hmm. The client gives um, us revisions of Wilmington, permission to hang art on the walls. Um, again, no painting or repairs um, while the house is in active listing status. Mm -hmm. We have a clause that says rented furniture, accessories, and other items are for display purposes only and are not to be lived on. And mm -hmm. if, uh, if our inventory does incur damage, um, while it's in the home, the client is responsible for the fees related to dry cleaning or um, professional cleaning of the inventory. Or repairs. Or, or repairs, yeah. Yep. Um, we also um, indicate that the client is solely responsible for any pre-staging, cleaning, declutter decluttering, packing, or storing of their personal items so that we're not going to be responsible for packing their materials for them. And then last but not least, we ask that the clients leave the home staged in, in the manner that we have, have left it. Uh, we don't want them moving stuff around or making decisions. Um, we've, that's the service we've provided and, and we ask that they leave it as, as we've left it for them. Yes, and then we also indicate that we are going to leave our marketing materials in the home to be displayed. Um, sometimes they do get moved and that's not really a big deal, but we do like to leave business cards out because that does generate additional um, jobs for us in the future. <clears throat> and now for the real last but not least. <laughs> <laughs> the other one. I, I jumped the gun on that a little bit. <laughs> uh, we require that the homeowners uh, provide proof of insurance so yes. that, um, that we're extra protected. Absolutely, as you should as well. Yeah. Um, we have a photography and publicity release, which um, indicates that the client acknowledges that we are going to take photos of their home and we are going to use them on our social media accounts and in our portfolios on our websites. And um, that, of course, benefits them as much as it benefits us because we are going to give them as much exposure as possible so that their listing can get sold as quickly as possible. Do us a favor and um, hit the subscribe button and click on the bell and you'll receive notifications when we upload more videos. And if you have more specific questions about things that are uh, roadblocks for you in your home staging business, drop us a comment below and we will cover those topics in our upcoming videos. I have a feeling that we could talk just a few more minutes about the insurance okay. issue because that's, this is an area where we get a lot of questions from you. Um, how do we have coverage? What do we cover? You wanna talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so in our contract, um, we, we require our client to carry enough insurance that would cover the full replacement costs of all of our furnishings if there were a disaster, if there were a fire or, um, or a hurricane, which we had a, a pretty devastating hurricane about a year and a half ago. Um, we were fortunate that none of our stuff was damaged, but there were so many houses damaged in our community and it was something that nobody saw coming. So um, thankfully we didn't have to replace any of our inventory, but people had their entire roofs caved in and had that happened in one of the homes that we had staged, we would have, we would have ruined everything we had. So you want to make sure that you are adequately covered and in addition to us requiring the homeowner to carry their own insurance policy, we are also heavily insured. Important. So to recap, you need a contract. It needs to be tight. It does not need to be complicated. You can use the points that we provided you with today 
and recreate your contract really specifically the way that we have. If you want some more information about this, contact us directly. Leave us a comment, send us an email, let us know your questions. We can talk to you about this more specifically if you'd like. We're here for you. We're Revisions Mentor. Thanks for watching.